So in this video, I'm going to be uh, covering the topic simultaneous equations and I'm going to teach you guys how to solve two equations simultaneously. The method that I'm going to be focusing on is elimination for now. I do have a couple of videos on substitution. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. You guys can go check it out. Uh, this is um, the reason why I want to focus on elimination is because this method is far more efficient. It's a lot neater, and uh, if you're if you're an O-level math student, that this is then this is the one method you really need to get your get a good grip on. Anyway, so let's let's get straight to it. So we have two equations: two x plus y is equals to five. X plus three y is equals to five. Also, okay. So first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the two equations are written nicely. And by that, I mean you have x first and then y and then the constant. It doesn't really matter whether it's x first, but make sure that the order is the same. You could have y first and then x and then the constant or whatever unknowns that you have. Make sure that you have it written nicely such that you have one unknown, then the other, with then an equals to sign and then, an const then a constant. And same for the, uh, for the other equation also. The next thing you want to do is you want to decide what variable that you want to eliminate. Okay. And there's no right or wrong answer to this question. Okay. You could eliminate X, you could eliminate Y. That's entirely up to you. So what I would decide at this point, and again, this is just completely my preference. You can, you can eliminate any, uh, if I'm, if I've decided to eliminate X, you can eliminate Y and the other way around also. So let's say at this point, I decide that I am going to eliminate X. Now, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to keep this in mind that whenever you're eliminating a variable. So you got to make sure that the coefficient of the two of, of that variable is the same and opposite. Okay. So I'll tell you what I mean. Okay. Same in value and opposite in sign. Okay. So this is the one thing that you need to remember whenever you're doing elimination. Okay. So since I've decided that I'm going to eliminate X, what I'll do is I'll just rewrite both the equations. So you have two X plus Y equals to five and then X plus three Y equals to five also. So if I want to eliminate X, I'm going to focus on the coefficient of X in the first equation. That's two. And the coefficient of X in the second equation, since we have nothing with X, so that means there's one, it's not zero, it's one. Okay. So if I want to eliminate X, I'm going to make sure that the coefficient of X in the second equation is minus two. And why do I want to do that? Because when I add two and minus two along with X, of course, two X and minus two X, it gets eliminated. And that's the word. That's where the word elimination comes from. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the second equation by minus two. So what happens to the first equation? Absolutely nothing. Okay. It's like we've multiplied it by one. The second equation, however, is minus two X minus six Y equals minus 10. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've written it nicely in that such that that X is aligned with X, Y is aligned with Y and the constant is aligned with constant. And then at this point, what I would do is I would add the two equations. Okay. Now, when I add the two equations, what happens is, is that two X plus minus two X gets eliminated. And this is not a coincidence. This is exactly what we wanted. Y plus minus six Y is going to be minus five Y five plus and minus 10 is going to be minus five. So what happens is that the two negatives get canceled out and I'm looking at five Y equals to five, which means Y is equals to five upon five, which basically means that Y is equals to one. And at this point, once you have the value of Y, do not get carried away and think this is the end of the question. You still have to figure out the value of X. And in order to do that, you can pick any one of the two equations and find out the plug in the value of Y and find out the value of X. So I'm going to pick equation number two which is basically X plus three Y equals to five. You can also pick the multiplied version also. Okay. It doesn't matter which equation you pick. You should get the correct answer if you, given that you haven't done anything wrong. So X plus three times one is equals to five. That means X plus three is equals to five. Take three over to the other side. So X is equals to five minus three, which means that X is equals to two. And there you go. You have your two answers, X is two and Y is one. I will encourage you guys to take these two values of X and Y, plug them back into the equation and see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And you can do that in both the equations if you want to be sure whether you've done it correctly or not. So that was one question. I will solve another question for you guys. So here's example number two. Okay, so here's another example. This one is seven X plus two Y equals to 19. And then you have X minus Y, which is equal to four. Again, I'm going to be using the same method elimination. And uh, in this particular question, I would prefer strongly prefer to eliminate Y. And I'll tell you why that is, because if you look at the coefficient of Y in the first equation, so that's positive two. And if you look at the coefficient of Y in the second equation, so that's minus one. So that means 
if I want to eliminate y, what I can do is I can somehow turn minus one into two by simply multiplying it by two, okay? I don't need to multiply it by a negative value because its sign is already negative. Like the, co the coefficients of y already have opposite signs, okay? So that way you don't have to multiply it with a negative value. Although there's nothing wrong in doing that, but just if there is a point where you can avoid it, it's best that you do. And then like I said, you could have eliminated x also and still ended up with the right answer. So I'm multiplying equation number two by two, as I just mentioned. So what happens to the first equation? Absolutely nothing. It just remains as it is. The second equation, however, becomes two x minus two y equals to eight. Now this is the point where you add the two equations. So seven x plus two x is equal to, whoops, sorry, not 11 x, nine x. 2y minus 2y gets eliminated, which is exactly what we wanted. 19 plus 8 is equal to 27, which means x is equal to 27 upon 9, which means that x is equal to 3. Again, at this point, don't get carried away and think it's the end of the question. You still have to figure out the value of y. And that's what I'm about to do. x minus y is equal to 4, which means 3 minus y is equal to 4. And if I shift y over to the right hand side and bring four here, so I'm looking at three minus four is equals to y, which means y is equals to minus one. And there you go, you have your two answers. And that is, this is now the end of the question. So let's do one more example. And in this example, I'm just gonna spice things up a little. So, Okay, so here's example number three, and you can see that I've uh, changed the question slightly. So what you wanna do first is that you want to, wait, so this was 4C plus, 4D plus 3C, yeah. So my bad, let me just fix that real quick, yeah. So what you wanna do now is that you wanna first write the question nicely before you do elimination. So if I look at the first equation, so I would write it as 5C minus D, and then I take 11 over to the right hand side so that this is then written in the way that we're used to dealing with. So we have C first and then the term with D in it and then the constant after an equals to sign. And then I would rearrange the second equation such that I have C first and then 4D and then uh, I have minus five. Now, although in this equation, it's preferable that you eliminate D as, as I just explained earlier, but just so that I can explain a very important concept, I am going to eliminate C, okay? So if I look at the coefficient of C in the first equation, that's five, and the coefficient of C in the second equation is three. So five and three, I can't really multiply five by something, by an integer, and turn it to three, and I can't really multiply three by something and turn it into five, okay? They're, they're not, uh, three is not a factor of five, five is not a factor of three. So what I would do is I would look for a common multiple of five and three, and if you wanna find that, what you can do is you can simply multiply the two numbers, five and three, so you get 15. So what I would do is I would turn the coefficient of C in one equation as positive 15 and the coefficient of C in the other equation as negative 15. So let's say I wanna turn the coefficient of C in the first equation as positive 15. So I'm just gonna times it by three. So I'm looking at 15C minus 3D equals 33. And that means now in the second equation, I gotta make sure that the, I turn the coefficient of C as minus 15, for which I need to multiply it by minus five. So I'm looking at minus 15 C minus 20 D is equals to positive 25. Be very careful of the signs, especially, especially when you're multiplying an equation by a negative number. Okay, so now if you add the two equations, 15 C minus 15 C gets canceled out you get minus 23D here, and then 33 plus 25, although I shouldn't be using a calculator, but is equal to 58. Now that you want the value of D, let's work this out. So what you get is 58 divided by 23. So D is equals to 58 upon minus 23, 
which means that a nicer way of writing this would be that you write the minus sign with the numerator, so minus 58 upon 23. And yes, the answer can be in fraction and it's best to give it in fraction only because if I were to find the decimal value of 58 divided by 23, so that gives me 2.5217 and then the decimal just goes on forever. So it's not recommended that I give the answer in decimal because that way I'll end up rounding it off. And now to find the value of D, I would use the simpler of the two equations, which was 5c minus d is equals to 11. So 5c remains as it is. You have one minus of the equation and then one minus of the value of d itself, which is equal to 11. So minus minus becomes plus. So 5c plus 58 upon 23 equals to 11. At this point, it's always a good idea. It's, it's a good idea to use a calculator. So 11 minus 58 upon 23 gives me the value of C. So I'm looking at 195 upon 23. And then if you want the value of C, I'm gonna take this value in my calculator and straight away divide by five. So now I'm looking at C is equals to 39 upon 23. And that give, brings me to the end of this question and also the end of this video. I hope you guys understood this concept. And that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, bye-bye.